Exclusive. Tyler Knowles here sitting down today with Mark Magidson and Ron Frick, the filmmakers behind the new film, or should I say the new experience, known as Samsara. I just want to start by saying that the sacrifices that you've made as far as the time and the effort and the work that you've put into this, the uh, degree of lunacy, I suppose, that's required to capture the images that you have, to me, it's completely worth it. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So you've treated me personally to hours of, of bliss just watching your films over time. So uh, not just as a filmmaker myself or a fan of film, but as a human, that's really, that's really special to me. So thank you. So we'll discuss Samsara, but first I want to kind of ask some personal questions about you two. Now you uh, worked together on 1985's time-lapse film Kronos. Uh, you worked again in 1992 on the highly acclaimed Baraka. How did you meet and what has kept your relationship so strong for over a quarter of a century? Guys, we met through some you girlfriends, I think, at the time, way yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. And what keeps it going? I, mean, well, I suspect I think we're you love working together. Both but. interested in making art and, and doing crazy, insane things, like yeah. you said. So. <laughs> sort of headed down this road with this nonverbal, well actually Ron started with Koyana Scotsi, but um, uh, then I got, I got involved with him at, after seeing that and was just blown away by that film and we got together and he, he had a box of camera parts for making an IMAX film which ended up being Kronos and uh, so it, en it ended up just uh, being a progression, uh, it, you know, you, you 45 minute film or 40 minute film Kronos and felt like it wasn't long enough and we talked about making a really longer longer form piece of work and that turned out to be Baraka and you got to make space for these films in your life they take up a, a lot of life energy and yeah, that's why there's a gap you know there's a gap and uh, you just can't go out and do these things string them together very easily and um, so because they just take so much and uh, so here we are you know yeah. with Samsara. Well along those lines you even outdid Baraka as far as the amount of time you took to film five years including the post-production on this 25 countries, five continents, 99 minutes of runtime, I believe it is. You guys must really like traveling, right? Did you have an itch to travel as a kid? Well, that, that's what makes these films work. You, the, the more locations, the more countries, the more tapestry you put into the film, that's what it needs. Yeah. So it's not like we can hang out in one country. We would, you know, <laughs> if we could just like shoot it all in the Vatican, right, that's right. where we'd go. I mean, you know, it's, it's not so much about loving travel, honestly, it's about, it's, it's just about What's on the, what goes on the negative. It's about the film, it's about capturing imagery, amazing imagery, and because we know that that's what is going to be the fabric of, that the film's made from, and, and that's, what, that's what we're about. It's, you the know, edit just gobbles it up. So. Sure. Anywhere that you haven't been yet that you really want to go well, to? Well, there's that there. one country <laughs> that wouldn't We tried for two years to get to North Korea to film say, there, yeah, and that, that's the one that, that got away. Uh, we got a pretty good batting average, but we, we couldn't make that one happen, almost. You must have to be real good. I mean, you carry, you both carry lots of titles on these movies. You produce, you create, you edit, you direct, uh, but you also negotiate. You must be really good at negotiating to get into some of these locations. We're really relying on our local production companies wh uh -huh. wherever we go, and there's a whole network of that, those around the world, news, people that work with news crews and so forth, and uh, we just work with some great people, and that's, you know, um, it, it helps to have, the, have, have had Baraka because everyone knew, knew Baraka out in the, in the world. And uh, Mark's got great skills. He's uh, directing all this and producing all this. And, and he's also creatively involved in the project. Yeah. So it takes someone but, at the level that he operates at to pull this off. But we've, we've been doing this a while, so we kind of know how to do it at, at do. this point. I mean, you know, you, you get turned down. I mean, it happens. It's, it's, you get no's. And actually, this film was a little harder that way, mm -hmm. I think, uh, accessing uh, than, than 20 years ago. Uh, a little harder to get, get people to say, yeah, you can come in here and film it. But, you know, you, you make it work. When you set off to do Samsara, there wasn't these digital acquisition that we have today. There wasn't 4K or 5K or RED cameras, really. I mean, they were prototypes, but it wasn't ready for you to actually Not ready to go to on it. the road, right. So I'm curious about, for the audience that really wants to get the best possible picture and sound quality when they go and see Samsara, what would you say to them? Like, what should they look for at their theater, you know, to make sure it's, it's the best that it can be? 4K, 7.1 okay. surround. Oh, yeah, they should. Mm -hmm. It, it looks phenomenal in 2K, you know, yeah. I mean, there's just so much resolution. It's really the, the, the process of 
converting that negative to a digital file that where that quality is, and regardless of whether it's outputted as a 4K or a 2K or even a Blu-ray, which we found with Baraka when we, we created the Baraka Blu-ray, which was really well regarded. Yeah, uh, the most beautiful Blu-ray. Right, in the and, world, that, and they that say. has that's because the quality of that negative ends up in that digital file right. when you scan it at those super high scan rates. This is another technical question. Um, oh, this is my question about rushes. We're going to skip that part. You've already explained right. that to oh. me. You don't do rushes. You guys carry the film with you <laughs> wherever you what? go. Yeah, what rushes? Keep it close. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so I read that with Samsara, you guys cut first, and then uh, Michael and Lisa and uh, Marcello added the music afterwards, which is different than how you did Baraka. I believe Baraka, you cut to music for the most part. That's right. Um, what drove this choice, and how did you find that it affected the final film? Well, I think it. Um chose a Zen approach to cutting it so that the, the imagery would really lead us to uh, make these blocks, we call them these, these little uh, content blocks. And uh, the film was all about flow, about interconnection. So we call it a guided meditation and, and it's really about hooking up this flow, how everything's interconnected. So we just let the imagery dictate how it wanted to go together. And uh, yeah. without the music or without sound effects, steering it in any which way. And it turned out to be an amazing process. It, uh, and then when the music came in, it was like, oh, wow. It was like, took it to a whole nother level. Yeah. And was it, did it work well for your composers to do it this way as well? Did yeah. They, mm -hmm. It, it also happening? kind of um, uh, dictates the type of music you end up with real music. You're not getting this film score where you're getting a musical highlight on every cut and every edit you get a piece of music that you know that's a whole that that matches the sequence that they've made the music for uh, so it's it's real music it's really and it, and we're not trying to micromanage the emotional dialogue musically because uh, we want to leave space it's a type of filmmaking for the viewer to bring some of their own dialogue so that whole process meshes really well yeah. the way the film's edited the way the music is done well i agree and the result is incredible so um, there's one sequence in Samsara specifically that I have to ask you about. You have a very powerful scene, at least to me, that sort of reminds me of the silent scream scene from Baraka. And this is a scene where a gentleman sits down in his suit at a desk and he starts to cover his face with some mud, I think it is, and then some feathers and some hair and some paint. And he just does this performance in front of the camera. What was the story behind that scene? <laughs> He's a, a French performance artist that we've, a friend of ours turned us on to. I think we, he found him on YouTube, I'm not sure. But uh, he was amazing. And he, um, we put him in the suit and put him behind the desk. But this is something that he does. This is his performance. So we thought it was very, uh, fit the film perfectly in that he sort of revealed this subconscious level, this, this uh, through the clay and the, um, but but you're right. It is. It's like our. It's like the Samsara Buto that was in Baraka, that mm -hmm. Japanese performance, contemporary art form. We had many performance pieces in the film, like the opened with the Bali girls yes. and the Thousand Hands at the, the hands. Yeah. Yeah. He was just another piece, although he looked a little more staged or something. It's just because it is pretty intense. Extremely intense, definitely. Mark, I had the privilege of hearing you talk and answer some questions at one of the 70 millimeter uh, screenings of Baraka that was at the Egyptian back in March. And I learned uh, about your background as a, an engineer and an inventor. And I know that you both have come up with some technology to capture the images that you were able to capture. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, like some of the technologies that you've had to create to push uh, forward, push mm -hmm. cinema forward really, and what you need to capture. Well, you know, really, Ron designed these cameras, mm -hmm. actually, for all the films, for, for starting with the Kronos camera, Kronos, Baraka, and Samsara, and I think brought in motion control into Kronos for, from which yeah, you Yeah, Mark's right in there. You didn't have the software Scott, so, and, and. Yeah, anyway, it. it's, but we, we, we yeah, I know, we, the, each of these iterations of these cameras have gotten a little further than the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's just, uh, uh, now it's, you know, it pans, tilts, dollies, jib, jib lift, and time lapse. All, all of the above at the same time. It, it has really amazing versatility. And, you know, we worked it out after all this time, so it's really compact and we can travel with it with a small crew. And uh, it's a really great toolkit. It's a, just a creative toolkit that uh, 
you used to just capture this amazing imagery. And it just took us uh, three and a half years to debug the <laughs> software program as we were shooting, but uh, hardware it's first, a little, then software yeah, it's follows, a little, yeah. it's a bit of that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ron, I read that you, as a college student, you were deeply impacted by your viewing of another 70 millimeter film, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Mm. I'm wondering if there are filmmakers or auteurs or artists today that have had an impact on your life or on your work. Oh gosh, I mean, uh, there's so many. Um, God, uh, I mean, I remember when I was back in the 2001 days. I was growing up on uh, all this uh, European cinema, Fellini and uh, Bergman, and uh, uh, so today there's just so many good filmmakers that um, um, worked with Francis Coppola yeah. for a while and. Uh, and there's uh, George Lucas, and uh, I mean, they're just all great. I mean, uh, so yeah, it's I don't know if I can just narrow it down to one, but they're all such innovators. Yeah. And uh, it's a great time to be alive. Yeah, film. certainly in filmmaking, it's just amazing. So I recently talked with a woman who has written books and studied the idea that most everyone, especially successful people, have experienced a moment of epiphany in their life. So I'm wondering if you have, and uh, like if, with your films, if there was some sort of eureka moment involved when you were making them or prior to making them, if you've had an epiphany that you can share. Mark? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> um, Tough question. You know, I, you know I, I don't know that you'd call it an epiphany. I think it, 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 we, we just do, uh, I think, I don't want to say, uh, we, do, we, we do a few things well, you know, and, and don't do a lot, you know, it's, these, there's a lot of space, but these films just take so much work. I think, you know, that, a gradual epiphany, if you can call it that, it was really just the, just traveling around and just realizing how many people in the world are familiar with that know Baraka, which we didn't know about. You know, we didn't realize that it had yeah. that reach, and uh, because it doesn't need to be translated in languages and all, it just sort of universal, universal thing, and it just, it's 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 uh, something that you know is inspiring in a way, and also a little bit of pressure because you know with with this film, you just go, gosh, you know, we we kind of got this legacy. We, weren't thinking, you know, thinking about, we certainly want to, don't want to screw it up now, you know, and yeah. so we work really hard on this, uh, you know. Well, it shows. But Something I kind of want to put in my review, I guess with your permission, <laughs> is that if I had to show an alien, if an alien suddenly showed up and I was able to present a film to them, I, I think it would be Baraka or Samsara now, because you're right with the translation thing, no, no dialogue. It's yeah, we speak a totally too, universal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they saw it the same way, at least, they, <laughs> they might take off as soon as they uh -huh. saw it. This is kind of a big question, and this comes courtesy of Mark Parsons over here. In making your films, how did your global awareness and spiritual consciousness evolve? Thanks, Mark. Mm. <laughs> when you're out in the world and you're exposed and immersed in all these different cultures and all these different environments and, and all these different languages and countries and religions. It's, um, you know, I, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, you, I, I come away feeling how fortunate we are here. I mean, there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of tough uh, conditions that people survive in. And, and that's one of the, the things that I think is, that I, that I think about, that, that I come away from all that with. Um, I don't know what, if that would be an epiphany or what. It's just a, a sense of, um, of uh, how difficult life is for most people. Absolutely. You also realize there's how we're, we're all so interconnected, the, the flow that we're all involved in. Yeah. And um, I remember hearing this, and it's so true, I think, that uh, you, know, you could say life invited all of us to this mud ball that's floating in space and, and, and life didn't ask any of us to approve of the guest list okay. and uh, you get that sense when you uh, talk to different cultures and people and doing these portraits that you can see um, even in Tut's death mask you look, at, you look into the eyes of that mask and you can see it in everyone's face I mean you can see this connection this spirit this uh, soul um, one last question, and uh, something that I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering uh, now that you've made a follow-up, I suppose, to Baraka, and that is, uh, read Eric Hines interview both of you guys, and he asks you, could you imagine doing it again? And now, Ron, you talked about maybe having a couple more in you, 
and Mark, you were a little bit more hesitant. Okay. So <laughs> I'm wondering, will there be a third film or more even from yeah, you two? I think there's one more big world epic out there to do, maybe in 3D. I don't know. I'm yeah. thinking about it. I'm, big, I'm a big fan of Jim Cameron, too. Yeah. Just amazing what he does and how he deals with technology and how he's refined 3D. So, but I think, you know, maybe we'll take a break for a while and yes. we might discuss it. Who knows? I hope yeah. not a 20 year break yeah, again. Yeah. No, I won't no we're not season. getting any younger. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, when we finished Barack, I, I thought that was it. You know, 24 countries, three years, and, and here we are, you know, so you just never want to say never, but uh, need, need a little bit of space. But I think Mark yeah. and I are really good at doing this. I think we know how to do it. You know, it, it's. Um, we're fearless now, and that's what, when we went out on Samsar, we had that uh, behind us, Baraka, and, and uh, so we, armed with a bit of new technology, uh, we were able to just go for it. And it's not as easy as it looks no. to make a nonverbal film without a screenplay. It's, um, yeah, the, the sense that we felt like, okay, we're going to make this work as a film. I mean, we know we had great imagery, we, we knew that. Um, but you know, finding that, that third level, finding that long form and how to put the, that's that's really uh, the, the scary part. And that was the scary part on Baraka. And uh, but we you know we felt like this time we weren't going to worry about it. We were going to find a way to make it work. And we know if we bring uh, the images back, those gorgeous 70 millimeter images, you know, that we get enough enough tapestry that it'll guide us. It'll show us the flow. Yeah. And that's really what the film is about. It's about the flow. Yeah, and the con yep. interconnection of things. Well, it's an amazing film, so thank you again, both of you, sure. for sitting yeah. down with me. It's a privilege and an honor because well, I'm well, a big thanks. fan well, of both of you. Well, thanks Great. for you know, being so well-versed in everything because that makes it so Appreciate much that. easier and, and uh, a lot more fun, too. Yeah.